Hello everybody, today I will be giving you a guide on the optimal setup for crossbows. This video will be divided into three sections. Optimizing the crossbow, crossbow aiming, and then my crossbow build. Let's get started. First off, we will go into the game settings and make some adjustments. So you want to turn off camera auto rotation and you want to turn off camera auto wall recovery. Both of these settings will mess with the camera, which is really annoying when you're trying to aim a crossbow. So it's better to just turn these off and aim the camera manually. Uh, and as some of you may know, there is an aiming dead zone with crossbows. Uh, so what you want to do is go into your settings and put the camera speed all the way up to 8. Uh, by putting your camera speed to 8, it will mostly correct this issue since the dead zone is entirely based off of timing. So by putting your camera speed to 8, this will manipulate the timing of the crossbow and make it more accurate. Next we will go into the button settings and remap one of the buttons. Uh, you want to remap L1 to R3. Uh, what's useful about this is that you can control both the camera and when you fire at the same time. Uh, plus this will make it easier to hold your shots and will make the crossbow more accurate. In case anybody is wondering about my button layout, I'll just briefly post a couple of screenshots. Now we'll go to the character creator and make one small adjustment. So what you want to do is put your character's arms all the way down to zero. Uh, this doesn't make a huge difference but it makes your character's hitbox smaller, which makes the crossbow just slightly more accurate. The two best crossbows for you to use are the Arbalist and the Full Moon Crossbow. The Arbalist has the highest damage of all crossbows, and the Full Moon Crossbow has the highest damage for its weight, as well as the best chip damage against shields. The main bolts you want to use are Exploding Bolts, which deal level 2 hit stun when they poise break. The other bolts you want to use are black key bolts, which inflict rot, or the sleep bolts. Uh, but I find that rot pressure with crossbows is the most effective since they are not super high damage weapons, and it becomes a useful chipping method to stack with scarlet rot. Now, if your opponent is using a shield, you're going to want to swap to the full moon crossbow and use lightning bolts, as they have the best chip damage against shields. You can also use Meteor Bolts, which will deal even more damage, but they are harder to land. As I said before, the Full Moon Crossbow has the best damage for its weight. It does nearly the same damage as the Heavy Crossbow, and only has a weight of 4. When you offhand a crossbow, you can swap bolts from your right hand bolt slot to your left hand bolt slot by holding L2 and then pressing L1, like so. However, you cannot swap from L1 to L2 like you could in Dark Souls 3, but this is a good setup for mix-ups. The two talismans you should be using are the Spear Talisman and the Arrow Sting Talisman. The Spear Talisman will increase the damage of counter hits, and the Arrow Sting Talisman will increase the damage of arrows and bolts. But first, let's look at a regular hit with a crossbow. 155. Now let's see how much damage I get on a counter hit with Spear Talisman and Arrow Sting. 223, so you're getting a lot more damage. One of the main counters to crossbows is Jump Attack. But there's a couple ways you can deal with this. One way is to knock them out of the air while they jump, but this will only work if you poise break. The better way to counter jump attacks is to use a run cancel. So how a run cancel works is you aim the crossbow while holding the run button, 
and then you soft swap your left or right hand and this will instantly put you into a run. The reason this is effective is because certain attacks like the running R2 on a straight sword will actually anti-air. So if you know your opponent is about to go in with a jump attack, all you have to do is run cancel into a, into a running R2 and this will anti-air the jump attack. You can also cancel a loaded crossbow into a crouch and you can cancel it into a jump. So there are three angles you will use when aiming a crossbow. You have the Z axis which aims vertically up and down. You have the X axis which aims laterally left and right. And then you have the Y axis which is sagittal and aims forwards and backwards. First let's talk about the Z axis. The Z axis has a dead zone when you aim it meaning that the crossbow will auto-adjust itself to the direction you move the camera without you doing any extra inputs, like so. Uh, this does make free aiming a bit confusing, but luckily this can be negated as the moment you shoot a crossbow, it is locked into that position regardless of the aiming dead zone. You can see if I shoot midway through the crossbow's auto-adjusting, it will stay locked into that position. So all you have to do is learn the timing for it. I will play a clip in slow motion so you can see exactly how the crossbow locks itself into place uh, the exact moment it fires. When aiming a crossbow, you want to delay your shots by roughly one second by doing this, you will cause the aiming dead zone to be triggered late and it will give you more control over your aiming. So for example, if I were to shoot immediately, you can see I don't really get very much range. But if I delay the shot, you can see I get a lot more range. I will briefly explain the use of the Y axis. When you're aiming and you're constantly moving forward like this, you're actually reducing your range. Because when you're close to your opponent and you try to go for a long range shot, it's highly likely that you're gonna overshoot and your shot's gonna miss. So it's better to be uh, somewhere far away where you can hit them long range, but also you can hit them at medium and close range. So the way to do this is to do a 180 uh, before you shoot and this will give you way more control over your positioning. It's very important to center your camera before you aim because if you put the camera too high and then you try to aim it's likely you're gonna overshoot. So just center the camera and then aim. Also, crossbows sit lower to the ground in this game than they did in Dark Souls 3, which means you can't shoot as far as you could before. But what you can do is jump aim, and this will extend the range of your crossbow. Jump aiming is based off the angle of your camera and the height of your jump. The higher the angle, the farther the crossbow will go, and the lower, the shorter it will go. Uh, the farthest range you can get is by having the camera completely centered or slightly high from center. Long story short, the Z and Y axis are good for short range and medium range, but not super good for long range. But that's okay because we have a really good X axis we can use instead. By using the lateral X axis on crossbows, you can fire in any direction and any distance. Unlike the Z axis, the X axis does not have an aiming dead zone. 
In fact, the x-axis is so accurate that it will adjust to even the slightest micro input of the analog stick. Because it is extremely sensitive to movement, you want to be careful not to overshoot and only move the camera a few pixels at a time. It should be mentioned crossbow bolts don't shoot directly out of the crossbow, it's only a visual effect. They actually shoot slightly below the crossbow trigger, near your hand, which does affect the trajectory of your shot. I will display this with a freeze frame. Look at where my hand is lit up next to the crossbow trigger. You can see the bolts fletching and shaft sticking out the back. And then you can see there's two bolts, one on top, one on the bottom. The one on top is only a visual effect, the one on the bottom is the actual bolt being fired. And then you can see the one on top has completely disappeared, but the one on the bottom is still shooting. Now we'll briefly discuss headshots. Landing a headshot with a crossbow is pretty inconsistent, but what you can do is headshot with a fan dagger and then combo it into a crossbow. You might think that headshots are not viable as you won't be landing them very often, but this is not the case. With fan daggers, they are very consistent, and I will show you a trick with the fire prelate armor to make it even easier. So what's special about the fire prelate armor is it has this red dot on the shoulders of the armor. Now with this, you can actually use it as a reticle and line it up to your opponent's head, like so. So right about there, looks correct. And now once you've lined it up to your opponent's head, you just throw the dagger and yeah, that's pretty much it. There are three ways to play fan daggers. You can play defensively and just roll away or roll into your opponent while throwing them. You can also play neutral, which is good for mix-ups. And finally, the best way to play them is to play them offensively and use running attacks. When you use running attacks with fan daggers, they actually become unreactable at close range, which makes them extremely powerful. Same as with crossbows, you can do a 180 pivot before you shoot, which will make your aiming more accurate. Although headshots with crossbows are inconsistent, they are consistent if your opponent is crouching. Also, if you didn't know, status builds up quicker with headshots. So first, let's see how many hits it takes to build up sleep normally. So it takes 4 hits. Now let's see how many hits it takes with headshots. So it takes 3 hits with headshots. So my stats for this build are min-max for using the Rotten Crystal Swords and the Full Moon Crossbow. I have 60 Vigor, 9 Mind, 34 Endurance, 54 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 16 Intelligence, 8 Faith, and 11 Arcane. I like using Rot on a crossbow build because crossbows don't normally do very much damage, but when you stack it with Scarlet Rot, it then becomes a lot more effective since you can start chipping your opponent while they are rotted, which adds a lot of pressure. Power Stance Straight Swords L1 does 68 poise damage, which is a breakpoint most people have or are close to, which means you can set up for an Exploding Bolt poise break after hitting them. Most people will roll a Straight Sword L1 after getting hit, so what you can do is L1, and when they roll, you shoot them with the crossbow. There's not much else to say about straight swords aside from L1 go burr, but they do have an interesting true combo, which is running R2 headshot L1, and you could potentially do this combo and then follow up with an exploding bolt, as I explained earlier.
Another good move on straight swords is the jumping R2. It has a lot of phantom range. Also, you can use an Ash of War as a mix-up. It's also really important to constantly apply pressure with crossbow. Since it's not a high damage weapon, you want to be getting in as many hits as possible. Plus, this will give your opponent less time to react. So let's take a look at my equipment. I'm running the Jar Helmet, Fire Prelate Armor, Lionel's Gauntlets, and the Omen Greaves. And for my Talismans, I have Godskin Swaddling Cloth, Companion Jar, Erdtree's Favor Plus Two, and Great Jar's Arsenal. Also, I can easily swap these two Talismans to Spear Talisman and Arrow Sting Talisman. And there's a reason I'm using the Jar Helmet and it's not just for fashion, which I will explain now. So the reason I use the Jar Helmet is because Volcano Pots are an amazing tool to use with crossbows and they are incredibly strong. First, let's look at how much damage they do normally. One ninety-seven. Now if I wear the Jar Helmet and the Companion Jar, let's see how much it does. 277, so you're getting a lot more damage. Basically, with Volcano Pots, all pressure that your opponents put against you gets negated when you use them. Because the majority of players will not want to step into a Volcano Pot and take unnecessary damage, and so long as you are staying close to the Volcano Pots, you can now start aggressing with the crossbow. Volcano Pots are good when you're in a scramble because it forces your opponent to play more carefully which is then your opportunity to headshot them or hit them with your crossbow. Also Volcano Pots and Mist Attacks will obscure your opponent's view making your shots less reactable. Although, unlike Mist Attacks, when you throw a Volcano Pot, the previous Volcano Pot does not disappear. So you can create a Vortex of Volcano Pots that will do insane damage if your opponent steps into it. Anyways, let's try to build in a duel. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you everybody for watching. And thank you to Gil, Chirico, Frenzied Shade and Toby for helping me record the video. Have a good day everyone.